four Muslims gang rape mentally disabled girl, judge frees them for one thing she failed to do. Despite identifying all four of the men who gang raped her, a mentally handicapped teen girl was informed that her attackers wouldn't be charged. Disturbingly, the judge said it was all because of one thing she failed to do. Although women suffer unimaginable human rights violations in over 50 Muslim-majority nations, leftists shamelessly advocate for Sharia law right here in the U.S. portraying Muslims as perpetual victims and censuring anyone who dares shed light on Islam's tenets, liberals have many women scratching their heads in wonderment over why free Americans would support such an ideology. Because the Quran repeatedly instructs that women are inferior to men and, therefore, must be submissive or suffer physical abuse, it's nearly impossible for a woman to live under Sharia law without encountering some form of brutality. Unfortunately for one rape victim, because of her inferiority as a female, she was not only forced to watch as her attackers walked free, but she has been handed a cruel fate, passed down by the Prophet Muhammad himself. In mid-December 2017, a 16-year-old girl with mental disabilities was gang-raped by four Muslim men in the coastal town of Garakat, Somalia, Reuters reports. After surviving the horrific sexual assault, the teen fled to the Puntland Maritime Police Forces to report the vicious attack and even successfully managed to identify all four of her gang rapists. Soon after, the perpetrators were arrested and held on suspicion of sexual assault. However, despite all evidence against them, the authorities not only freed the girls four gang rapists because they swore on the Quran that they were innocent but informed her that if she wanted to press charges, she would need to provide four witnesses to verify her accusation, in accordance with Sharia law. The 16-year-old girl confirmed that she was attacked by four Marines, all of whom are Somali Muslims, while on her way to gather firewood last year. Because she is required to produce at least four witnesses to even file a police report, she has tragically given up her quest for justice while her rapists currently roam the streets as free men. Although mainstream media outlets like the New York Times are chalking up the authorities' refusal to charge the men to unqualified investigators and a lack of basic forensics facilities, their judgment is solely based on the Quran and Hadith, which provide the groundwork for Sharia law. The legal requirement of four witnesses to corroborate a sexual crime and disqualify it as fornication stems directly from the Quran. In fact, Muhammad himself cited this Islamic law for both those accusing Muslims of rape or adultery, making an individual who cannot find four witnesses to support their accusation the true culprit. Quran, 2.282, Court Testimony, and Call to Witness, from among your men, two witnesses. And if two men be not found then a man and two women. Establishes that a woman's testimony is worth only half that of a man's in court, there is no he said slash she said gridlock in Islam. Quran, 24.4, and those who accuse free women then do not bring four witnesses, flog them, strictly speaking, this verse addresses adultery, revealed at the very time that Muhammad's favorite wife was being accused of adultery on the basis of only three witnesses coincidentally enough. However it is a part of the theological underpinning of the Sharia rule on rape, since strict Islamic law does not recognize rape if there are not four male witnesses or a confession. Quran, 24.13, why did they not bring four witnesses of it? But as they have not brought witnesses they are liars before Allah. The reason for this requirement stems from Muhammad's self-interest, as his own favorite wife, Aisha, was accused of adultery. Not wanting his favorite child bride to be stoned to death, Per his previous teachings, Muhammad summoned the requirement of accusers to bring forth witnesses or else they'd be punished as slanderers. As the Religion of Peace website explains, this requirement not only leads to rapists escaping deserved punishment but often results in rape victims being subjected to sentencing. Since it is incredibly unlikely that a child molester will violate his victim in front of four trustworthy men, strict sharia amounts to a free pass for sexual predators. Islamic law rejects forensic evidence such as DNA in favor of testimony. An interesting situation thus sometimes develops in cases where a victim alleges rape but the man denies that sex even took place. In the absence of four male witnesses, rape cannot be proven. The woman's testimony then becomes a confession of adultery. She can even be stoned, even though the male is unpunished since he never admitted to a sexual act. Of course, even if a female is able to provide the required witnesses to accuse her abuser, she can still be held responsible for her own rape if she was found to be physically tempting the attacker. This mandate is also found in the Quran, which orders men to force women to cover themselves with the hijab. Quran, 33,59, O Prophet! Tell thy wives and daughters, and the believing women, that they should cast their outer garments over their persons, 
when abroad that is most convenient, that they should be known, as such, and not molested. And Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. While American liberals are demanding we respect Islam and even encouraging women to wear the headscarf, millions of women are currently suffering under Sharia law and have no choice but to wear the oppressive hijab. If the left truly stood for women, they would oppose every aspect of Sharia's misogynistic laws instead of portraying it as a peaceful and feminist ideology. If you love your news from one sexy ass robot then like and sub then hit up my big fat bell.